Hi there, and it's Matt here, back once again for the next in my Retro Games series. And today, we're taking a look at Robocop versus Terminator on the Sega Mega Drive. Now, what can you say about this game? It was awesome. I first played it many, many years ago as a young man, whilst uh, spending time with my, uh, my friend Luke. Uh, if you're watching this, you know who you are. And uh, I remember this game just absolutely blowing me away. There was nothing quite like it um, on the on the Mega Drive. There was a port to the Super Nintendo. Uh, it's a good port. Always like the punch though of the Mega Drive version in terms of the sound and the music and the gore. I mean, of course, by modern standards, it's nothing. But when you think back to when this game came out, there was, it was one of the goriest games that you would see, short of being Mortal Kombat. So it really made it stand out. And of course, gameplay-wise, it's solid. Um, how best to describe the gameplay, of course, if you haven't seen the game before, um, it is a side-scrolling, I'd say run and gun, but of course, Robocop has no need to run. He just gets there in his own time and destroys everything in his path. But uh, yeah, a, pla a platforming, side-scrolling, run-and-gun action game where you get to play as Robocop versus the Terminator. Plus those two things in one game. Again, this is before crossovers became a, a common thing uh, in video gaming or in cinema. So, here we go. I'm going to play through the game. Uh, maybe not the entire game. I'm, I'm pretty good at this. I'm not expecting to complete it in a single run like Star Fox. But we'll see how far we get, and, uh... <sighs> I love the intro. Uh, see how far we get, um, in one run. I might do a second video to complete the game. So, uh, without further ado, without any more preamble, here we go. Well, that's the game demo, hang on. Let's just try doing it for real. Excellent. Let's try doing it for real. Now, of course, the story has all you scrolled across the screen. Love that 16-bit growl there, which is meant to be Ed 209, I think it is. Here we go, then. So you start off with the with Robocop's signature machine pistol, the Auto 9. I absolutely adore the Auto 9. I think it's like it's, it's iconic in the Robocop film uh, as Robo himself. But it is the weakest guy in the game, so I'll be looking for a game to upgrade the game. We'll be looking for a gun to upgrade it with as soon as possible. Look at the way these enemies fly apart when I shoot with the gun here. They just literally get pumped by the impact of the bullets. It's wonderfully over the top. Oh. Can just rapid fire by holding down the B button. I am, of course, playing on the original hardware. So in my hands, I do have. Oh, it's not a very long cable though. Um, the original Mega Drive three button controller. I can't lift it any higher because it's attached to the console currently. So, uh, but that is down there, the original Mark One Sega Mega Drive. Oh, dear, dear. Watch out for the bullets. That's the original Mark One Sega Mega Drive. And I'm capturing it through the Microsoft XRGB Mini to upscale the image to 1080p. But back to the game. So yes, it's a case of working your way through the level, shooting the bad guys, avoiding getting shot by the bad guys, and getting more powerful weapons to upgrade your arsenal. first stage is relatively easy. Of course, it's the game's first stage. You're not expecting it to be overly challenging. And that music as well. Of course, many people say that the Sega Mega Drive that it didn't sound as good as it says, and there are many occasions where it didn't. This is one of the occasions where it sounded better, in my opinion. Let's bring this guy down. Hold the button down, keep jumping the shots. There we go. 
Okay. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. <laughs> I mean, not terrible. It's great, but bloody hell, he just disintegrates. He just turns into a bloody mass. <laughs> oh, it shouldn't make me laugh so much, but it's so wonderfully over the top. I love this game. It's definitely one of my top ten for the Sega Mega Drive. And of course, Robocop is one of my top 10 films as well. I love the original Robocop film. Less so the sequel, and definitely not the third in the series. I mean, come on, who, like, who liked that film, seriously? It was okay, but after the genius that was Paul Verhoeven directing the first Robocop, yeah, and of course, Peter Weller. Oh, I actually haven't got uh, Mortal Kombat 11. Um, I do have a Nintendo Switch, so I could get it. Uh, and of course, I have a PC. I'm playing this on right now. But uh, I haven't got MK11. I do want to get it because, uh, simply because you do have Peter Weller in the game as Robocop. I mean, I'm a casual fan of Mortal Kombat. But when you tell me that the original Robo is in the game as Robocop, you can shut up and take my money. And that's though, there are many things I have to get first to prove my um, my setup for doing these videos. So, uh, I need microphones on the cards and better cables as well for my console. So, you may have noticed, uh, well, I can't see it ha happening currently, but as I've been playing, you may have noticed some weird distortion happening. Aha! Now that is like a mini rocket launcher, one of my favourite guns in the game. So I'm going to hang on to that. You may have noticed some weird distortion at the bottom of the screen, like, like dots go back and forth. And that's caused by the um, the image sync. So the, the signal from the console um, being sent to the Frame Meister. Um, there's a bit of interference there because it's a PAL console. It's a UK PAL Mega Drive. And the Frame Meister is designed for NTSC, 60 hertz. So there's a bit of... Um, a bit of a disagreement going on between the two. You can mitigate it to a point with the Frame Meister settings, but you still do get a little bit of noise in the image, a little bit of distortion. So, uh, I've got a cable that I'm ordering from Retro Gaming Cables, not Carrier UK. Uh, they are brilliant if you are into retro gaming. You, you might have heard of them. If you haven't, check them out. You're going to get some decent cables for connecting your retro games consoles to a modern TV or to any TV. They are the only people you should be going to, in my opinion. Top quality. But yeah, as I do more of these videos on the Mega Drive and the Super Nintendo, that is going to happen. There are plenty of SNES games I want to talk about too. There'll be an even bigger jump in quality, hopefully. Although I will say it's pretty much pixel perfect. But you're never going to get emulator quality. Um, of the original hardware, not really. Which are upscaling an analog signal to digital. There's always going to be a little bit of loss, a little bit of blur on that. But this, you know, I'm playing this right now, and I'm forgetting that I'm playing. Oh, oh, balls, I forgot it automatically swapped weapon I'm carrying. I know I've got the grenade launcher. I hate the grenade launcher. Right. We have it now, so excuse me. Yeah, but you get it. It's almost pixel perfect, this. You know, I'm playing it, and I'm almost forgetting I'm playing it on the original hardware. There are so many ways to emulate now, whether it's on your PC using RetroArch, uh, whether you have one of the mini consoles, and I do have the Mega Drive Mini, and you've installed um, Project Luna on it, or you're using Hatchy. So many ways to emulate Mega Drive games and SNES games, but it's not a replacement for the original experience. Emulation is exactly that. It's emulating the hardware. It's an approximation of what? A good approximation, but still, it's not the exact experience. Even things like your quality of life stuff, so be able to play all of the NTSC versions of the games, which we didn't get in the UK. You know, being that PAL games are 50 hertz. Honestly, 
unless you grew up with something different, you know, if you're, Amer if you're an American and you're used to playing games in 60 hertz or Japanese, uh, and used to it, absolutely, I can understand that. In the UK and Australia, I think most of Europe, we had, um, we had PAL at 50 hertz, and this is what we had. It's absolutely fine. That's the flame through there. I will take that. And further flame through to the um, to the grade launcher. We got you more passes. Can't stop walking into the uh, enemies that do harm you when you touch them. Hello, is that, is that grenade launcher again? Aha! That's the I need to place my flamethrower. I need to work out how that works. Right. Oh, there's our first terminator. to how um, we deal with um, weapon swapping. I just can't remember how we do it. Okay. So we'll destroy the security cameras. I'm going to switch to this gun. But we do prefer it to the grenade launcher. And you're not carrying. Perfect. That's what I wanted. Now, in this stage, I believe at the end we have to fight Robo Kane from Robocop 2. And uh, if you haven't got this weapon, he's quite a tough boss. So, uh, if I lose this weapon during the course of this stage, I'm going to be quite miffed. The game. It can be quite tough without him. Repeat myself there. lives later. But yeah, it always starts killing me off in this game, this fight versus Ed 209. When we get to the OCP building, I think it's the stage after this one, um, I just cannot seem to find the right path against Ed 209. I've been tempted to start watching some other playthroughs of the game on YouTube, to sort of see how others do it, but I like to work these things out myself, you know. I don't need either of those. 
fire power leak right here. One weapon I'm surprised doesn't turn up in the game is the Cobra Assault Cannon uh, we see in the first Robocop. You see Amy's using it, but you can't actually get it yourself. That's a uh, temporary visibility. Short work with this gun, as you can see. Just keep pumping in with those rockets, and he goes down. Goodbye, Kane. I cannot remember what his actual line is. It's over here. Okay. So. Toxic farm. You see, you'd think, now I'm pretty certain that in um, the arcade version of Robocop, you see a meal, uh, one of Clarence Bodica's gang, um, and they, you, they include him as basically like an, a melted version of himself as an enemy you fight. Um, again, I've not really played the SNES version of this game. I've seen a couple of Let's Plays, well, watch, watch bits of them to look at some of the differences between the two games. But I don't think he appears in that either. But come on, if you're gonna have basically the abandoned skill works, Robocop. That's my first life lost then. Uh, but if you, if you get the skill works from Robocop, the least that you can do. Let gun go. Just have a meal in the game as an enemy. Yeah, it's one of those scenes from the film which is, you know, classic Paul Verhoeven, you know, gross out, but at the same time, audiences love that scene. People actually ask, you know, well, well I think the MPAA were going to um, ask them to remove that scene from the film. The test audience says, no, that's great, leave it in. This gun's better for the stage because it goes around all the corners. I love the rocket launcher. But this sort of wavy bullet gun. I'm sure it has a more intelligent name than wavy bullet gun, but wavy bullet gun. useful is when you've got something on the ground like that. <clears throat> Things on the ceiling, fine. But when you're on the ground, you just, you just got to keep pumping the fire button to just get a cloud of those things going, so at least one of them will hit. They are quite powerful projectiles, so you don't worry too much about accuracy. Ah! 
I was expecting that. with the auto knight. And it's this thing. Okay. We're gonna be here for a while, I think. Take getting to Ed 209 to start taking all, getting rid of all our lives and what have you, but um, a couple of miscalculated jumps there on our uh, toxic waste. That's enough. Tell you what, that was not how our plan that stage to go. We lost most of our lives, and uh, yeah, right. I can play better than that. And we've got to fight uh, Ed 2 and I in this stage here. Right, let's try, try not to cock up anymore. If you don't get the gun when it appears, that's it. Gun vanishes, right. That is the exact gun we're going to use at this stage here. That's it. Game over! Well. Okay, so, uh... I've actually started a new game. And I've made sure to get from the previous level, from the toxic farm 
to this level with a better gun, in this case the flamethrower. And I must admit, after I played through the toxic file with this gun, I have come to like it quite a lot. So, uh... No, no, no. I said that entirely wrong. I like it! That's fair. So, let's get into the proper Robocop spirit of things here. So now I can get through without having to worry that my Auto 9 not having the firepower to bring these drives down. I've also noticed as well the flamethrower can block projectiles, which is very, very useful. It's kind of finicky when it does it. Oh, you better. I think, as long as we're careful, don't get cocky. He says, taking loads of hits. I'm going to switch back to my flamethrower temporarily. feeling of invulnerability, and then this stage happens. Which is actually quite um, true to the film, because in the um, in the film we see Robocop pretty much invulnerable until Dick Jones, you know, springs N209 on him, which absolutely messes him up, and then the SWAT team's outside who do even more damage. So, you know, whether that's intentional or not, it does actually work within the... Um, in the film. Kudos to Bethesda. Yeah, that was the developer of this game. Bethesda did make this game before they were famous. Ooh. Here he is. Head 209. Got 
timing right for those missiles. Back to, back to the Auto 9 now. Don't think we're gonna beat him, but we'll see. It always gets me. Every playthrough I do, Ed 209 thrashes me. Oh, there we go. This is head down. Go, go, go. Ah! That was me thinking I was going to actually finish him off. It's actually, if I, if I didn't get killed after getting Ed 209's actual gun, I'd be fine. Because he's gun's really powerful. It basically is a better version of the uh, Auto 9 in terms of its rate of fire. But yeah. I think I've got to play this more. Legs would just collapse and die. They'd just sort of keel over and uh, not do very much. But uh, so far, he's taken more hits with just his legs attacked than when he was all there. So, Ed 209's down, but uh, we got mauled in the process. Nevertheless, managed to get through the stage. That's tough. I need to be a bit more uh, a bit more careful as I proceed through the game. Alright, so we're now in the future. Right. So we're T-800s now, are we? Okay. This guy's not talking about. <laughs> Oh, right, so I know if I keep the distance here, I can actually destroy their projectiles before they hit me. That is gold. Right, so no more charging forwards without being careful. Right, 
must remember that this is a much better weapon. So you guys are Terminators, surely you must have a plasma rifle in the 40 megawatt range. I wanted that, you dick! Cable of bassier sound than this, so um, I'm pretty certain had the um, developers wanted to, it did a really, I think, good approximation of that, that sound effect that the plasma rifles make in Terminator. It's kind of pretty deep sound they make. Again. Right, I 
the alternate nine. the terminated portion of the game. We can see more easter eggs from the um, movie. I'm guessing it's going to be just the, the, the first movie rather than Terminator 2. This game did come out after Terminator 2, but... Uh but the flamethrower just blocks out. The projectile blocking of the flamethrower is really, really handy. How do we get out of here? Oh, that's
room full of termites. Nice. That's not cheap at all. Nine, damn it. It's gonna take weeks. It's gonna so weak. Oh. I did most of the damage with the grenade launcher. Just stay alive, okay. to do with a not got a decent gun. How am I supposed to get through this with the auto nine? Seriously. It's probably hell for sucks. when I continue something. Right. 
stage building. Okay, yeah, into this. Right, let's just get through that. That's trap. That's when you jump after it into like, ah, you just lost the life. This game is evil. I love it. Absolutely love it. They knew what they were doing. Oh my god, everything's happening at once here. Jeez. Alright. Oh. oh dear. How many continues have I got left? Oh, I got two left, okay. Just stay alive, yeah. Just just, just stay alive. Think about it. I do. I don't feel the game is being unfair because it's one of those things where, if you, you know, back in the old days of gaming, you would play the game repeatedly. You have to, have to remember where enemies are, and you have to remember the placement, the pattern of their attacks. It is old school gaming at its best. It rewards you for paying attention to those things. And it also rewards you know, skill and reflexes as well. What's the there? That looks good. How do we get in there? Can we get in there? Oh, but no. That's waiting for us later in the, uh, the level. Right. It, it rewards skill and it rewards patience. things head on. 
Otherwise, you're just getting loads of hits you don't need to. Last life. Last continue, I should say, sorry. Here we go. So nine, I mean, it's it's definitely less powerful. But oh. if you um, if you tap the button rather than hold it down, I think it actually does more damage. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. It's the uh, this feel of being more aggressive. Maybe I don't know. But uh, it definitely gives me the impression that it's doing more damage. Thank you. 
is excellent. How can we keep it without getting killed? Probably set down and played Robocop vs. Terminator in God knows how many years. So uh, if you have joined me today and you've been watching, thank you so much for joining me. It has been a fantastic playthrough. Really have thoroughly enjoyed, thoroughly enjoyed uh, playing through this game today after such a long time. I will come back to it. I, I'm, I, I refuse to uh, be beaten by... Robocop vs. Terminator, so uh, I think you can expect to see another one of these episodes um, within the next few weeks. I'll do a few different games in the interim, just to keep the, some variety, keep mixing things up, but there will be an episode two of Robocop vs. Terminator. So again, thank you for joining me, I hope you've enjoyed watching, I hope you've been raging at the screen through my inability to play the game properly, if you're more of an expert in this game than me, that's cool, I will keep playing and I will beat it. Anyway. This is Captain Matt, and I'm signing off. Take care, guys. See you again soon.